preventing food waste. So we take volunteers around to people's yards and pick fruit that the people are unable to pick or don't want and then we share it around the community. The, the homeowner is entitled to keep some if they so desire and the volunteers share some and the rest is donated to different organizations around town that deliver food outreach programs or do canning or cooking. It was people looking around town and seeing fruit all over the back alleys and the sides of the road rotting. Uh, apricots, cherries, whatever is in season. So the Food Policy Council uh, had sort of a little brainstorming session about what kind of new programs they wanted to see. And that was the biggest one that came out of that session was to start a gleaning program. And there were already several communities in the province that had you know, similar programs. So they applied for a grant from Interior Health and got a three-year startup grant to get the program going. There is so much fruit in Kamloops. I always knew there was a lot of fruit going to waste, like you and everyone else. I'd seen it all over the, the ground. But when I started doing this program, I was totally blown away by how much is out there. Like, we're really just doing a little bit of what is possible if we could get to all the fruit. So that's one of the main challenges is getting to all the fruit and then finding um, a use for it because during the, the season when the fruit is ready, there's so much all at once. So for example, apricots, after a certain point, the volunteers don't really want any more, the homeowners have had enough, and even the food agencies can't use any more, right? There's only so much they can do. So a challenge is finding a way to, to make use of that, what should be a valuable resource. So that's something that we're continually working on, and we hope to find some solutions in the future. Another challenge is giving opportunities to all the volunteers because we have over 300 volunteers. So when I put out a call, you know, say we're having a harvest uh, Saturday morning at 10, I often have to turn people away, which I hate to do. But uh, you can only take so many people, mm -hmm. otherwise it, it's just difficult to work and it's awkward. So far we've been working on a first come, first serve basis. Volunteer opportunities are put out by email. So people who live with their phones beside them all the time tend to be the ones who get the uh, gleaning opportunity. We're working on a way to make that more fair. For fruit tree owners, it, it's difficult because people don't want to cut down their fruit trees, but not everyone has the time or the inclination to look after the fruit tree. And it is a bit of responsibility. They have to be pruned, they have to be taken care of in other ways, and then you have to deal with the fruit. Mm -hmm. Pruning is a big thing, and that's another area we'd like to work on, is perhaps to get some kind of a pruning program for the Gleaning Abundance program tree owners so we could offer some discount pruning for their fruit tree to encourage people to do that. If you have a big giant cherry tree that's 30 feet high, it's really difficult to look after and to manage and you'll never use all that fruit. If you keep your tree smaller and manageable, that fruit will likely get picked and used, right, rather than wasted. Giving free fruit to hundreds, probably thousands of people in the community through all the agencies that we take the fruit to. So if we take some fruit to the food bank, it gets shared with all the food bank clients. If we take fruit to the New Life community, they share it with their clients, so it's spread through the community. And we have uh, over 15 different organizations that we deliver fruit to regularly. So many people benefit from, from getting this fresh, often organic produce as far as food waste. If we pick 20,000 pounds of fruit in one year, that's 20,000 pounds of fruit that could well have gone to waste if mm -hmm. we didn't pick it. Education is a big part of it. And just sort of changing the mentality. So what was seen as just a waste product, for example, apricots lying in the back alley, could then be seen as something valuable that uh, we should be using and making into some kind of products. And, and we realize, of course, that everyone isn't going to do that. But 
somehow we'd like to find a way to to find a use for that. So turning what was a waste product into a valuable resource. Why are we leaving apricots to rot on the ground when we can go to the grocery store and see them for two ninety nine a pound at that same time? The Kamloops Food Policy Council. It's an amazing network of people that are working on all different kinds of programs related to food. And the Gleaning Abundance program is just one program in that network. There's community gardens, community kitchens. The Garden Gate program was initially started by the Kamloops Food Policy Council as well. Now we're networking as well with Farm to School, so we're getting school kids involved. And that's really exciting because then you're getting people at a young age, they're getting excited. So this year there's several schools in Kamloops that will be using some of the product from the gleaning to make smoothies over the winter time. So we've had the Brock Activity Center has taken some of our fruit and volunteers there have partly processed it, froze it, and then they're going to have school kids come. They could be doing some canning, making smoothies, as I said. And we've had a group of school kids from Brock Middle School come out and actually take part in one of our gleans. So that's really exciting, getting young people excited about eating and cooking and making use of the food.